Feel free to eat. Just the idea. Yeah, lovely. Is, it's a relaxed conversation. Great. Uh, around your, oh, what, your what you're up to. Great. Um, so yeah, so nothing too formal about this. Right. So if you want to have some popcorn, have a drink. Go. For lovely. It. Um, so we'll begin. This yeah, smashing. Is the the BTS Creative Academy podcast. Yes. We're here at the Romford Film Festival. Yes, we are. Um, and joining me now is uh, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph. Joseph uh, Milson. Yeah. Joseph Milson. Me. Actor. Yeah. Filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me what, what what brings you here to the festival. I've been coming to Romford for a few years now. Uh, the first short film that me and my Mrs. made um, her short film, but I produced it and got it together. Came here in 22 and won Best Short Film, a film called The Magician, which you can see on YouTube. Just put The Magician brackets 4K, otherwise, you get Paul Daniels and stuff. Of course, yeah. Um, and then the next year, she dared me back, and I made a short called Care on YouTube, Care brackets 4K. Mm -hmm. And that won an award here as well. And we just love these guys. It was the very first festival we ever went to. And between those two films, they've been on at about 60 festivals worldwide now. Hers especially is one of those freakily good short films. Um, it's just won awards all over the world. Um, and we've both been actors for 30 years each, professional actors. And it's really interesting, the silver linings of lockdown, where obviously there was a lot of shit and a lot of pain and a lot of crap. People like us sort of worked out that we didn't have to wait for permission to be creative anymore. My mm -hmm. generation of actor, we were still in boxes. You don't cross pollinate. If you're an actor, you're an actor. Mm -hmm. You don't write and direct. What are you doing? Whereas my daughter's 22, and of course she does it all. She's yeah. Like, well, of course I do it all. Oh, oh, we've only just worked this out. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a revelation, and we have just, and the encouragement of Romford has been. I think they think I'm taking the piss. <laughs> I, honestly, this means the world to us, this festival. It was the mm -hmm. first place to champion our work. And um, so those two shorts have informed, effectively, we've just wrapped and tomorrow we finish editing. Tomorrow is Picture Lock on our first feature, which we shot in the UK and Lanzarote. And it is, it, it effectively, when you watch them, it will be uh, completing a trilogy of films about kindness and connection. You know, drama comedies about kindness and connection with fucking grade A casts because mm -hmm. we called in 30 years of favours. Oscar winning composer. That's what you have to do with independent Well, films, yeah, you know, right, and I've it. waited 30 years to do it. So I've got mm -hmm. on my feature, I've got fucking Oscar winning composer for free. It's <laughs> ridiculous. And, and all sorts of just, it's all top draw, mm -hmm. sort of a two million quid film. And we will have spent 50 grand on it, you know, which we got Kickstarter. Uh, one investor and selling my camper van and we made a film you know and um, and it's really beautiful it's called Signs of Life um, and it'll be done by the end of August so we're very confident that we hope <laughs> of course I don't want to presume anything but it it'll be really beautiful to show that here next year and what's mad is we've got sorry you asked me to talk it's like I'm a there we go I, this I is haven't where, had this coffee is, or cocaine is, or anything is, I'm just excited you've had to the see pop, people it's sugar popcorn, filled popcorn isn't it bit of that um, <laughs> no this is what we're here for oh we're it's here awesome to, I'm so to, happy to talk about it yeah that's what we're here for I want to hear about it but we've also had this is bizarre we've had a um so many weird bits of luck and meant to be -ness. Mm -hmm. about this feature I can't even tell you like the story itself just dropped in one morning I woke up and went fucking hell and so this you know, yeah let's let's start at the beginning of on the, then. let's start at the beginning here so you've you've got this idea for this this film no no this isn't your film Who's yes it? but okay. I mean I don't have it and then I work on it mm -hmm. this is what I'm telling you we made a short called the magician about very briefly you know she's not Mute, but it's a silent film. There's no dialogue. Fifteen okay. minutes, fucking beautiful. And is this your first? That your was my wife wrote and directed, and I yep. got it made. Mm -hmm. I produced it, and then mine. Those two characters, I literally—they're very separate stories. But I woke up one morning, literally, like, and went, "Oh, what if what happens in her film and what happens in my film?" Are happening like you never know in a town when you're having like either great sex in your bedroom mm -hmm. someone five doors away is ending their marriage mm -hmm. and vice versa someone's someone's falling in love while just in the next street someone else 
is you know saying goodbye to their parent who's dying. Mm -hmm. Right, you just shit's going on. So I went, yeah. oh, those two short films are happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I woke up and went, oh, I had a whole story about the lead woman in my wife's film and the lead chap in my film of how they legitimately and totally believably could meet. Um, she takes herself, she's got trauma, she's a mute. Now, I've done my research because I didn't want to get in trouble. There is a thing called traumatic mutism, mm -hmm. which is where people aren't born, they, they can speak, but then after a trauma sometimes, some people don't speak for three months, six months, a year, very rarely longer than that. You just don't speak. Um, and this woman, you don't know what the trauma is, but she's, mm -hmm. she's got that going on, and she has taken herself on a holiday to a package cheap, she's got no money, somewhere hot to get away, and there's a man there, who's like the guy from my film, who's there for very different reasons. He's coming out of a divorce, first holiday on his own with the kids, he's spunked credit cards, he can't really afford to give them an amazing time, and the night before that holiday, his ex-wife kiboshed it and wouldn't let him have the kids, so he's gone on his own. Mm -hmm. This woman arrives looking for peace, tranquility, and, you know, closure, and she gets violence, danger, and noise. The lads in the room next to her spot a single female, and they're all onto her. She ends up sleeping rough, having gone on holiday to recover. Mm -hmm. She's sleeping on a fucking park bench. Meanwhile, there's this guy who, everywhere he looks, is where his kids should be smiling and laughing. He's seen this woman. They were on the plane together. Cheeky bit of... Uh, foot sh shooting at an airport that we did. Um, and I feel like there's a story oh, there. <laughs> we'll come, we'll, oh, put, a pi we'll uh, put a pin put in Put a that. pin in there. But yeah. anyway, I'm just telling you the start of the film. Mm -hmm. He's seen this woman still wandering around with her suitcase. He can't handle it. He's going to go home because it's too much. He's like, I have a place. This is crazy. It, you know. So they end up realistically and believably, these two damaged people end up sharing a space. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not quite a romance, it's not quite purely a drama, it's not quite purely a comedy, but there are definitely laughs, there are definitely heartbreaking bits, and they're definitely kind of weird human romance, French buddy movie almost. What, and why, it just all works, it's weird. Why do you think these two separate stories had the power to come together to create this one? Um, I'm going to get wanky and I don't care. That's the point of this. That's, that's where, I, I you think, know, and I maybe think, there's some beauty in that. I think somewhere. it's come out of where both my wife, who is the actress Sarah Jane Potts, very well-known actress, she's got no desire to be a writer-director, but this thing fell out of her, her first short film, The Magician. Mm. I think we're both at that place where enough shit has gone on in our lives, and no, it's where a lot of people have what is called a midlife crisis. And what I mean by that, mid, mid, you get to your 40s and 50s now, stuff has happened. Yeah. And you can go two ways I had with that. My, I had mine in... Had it early. About two years ago. There you go. Yeah, late, late 30s. Motorbike, Porsche, or just an affair? <laughs> <laughs> All three. All three. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we had enough stuff that we ended that up it builds, it builds using up, it. it. Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was stuff to draw on without yeah. it being heavy. Uh, and we've managed to get through it ourselves that you can look back on it without it being too close. Mm -hmm. um, but you, and, and, and finding some way to release it and yeah, share that with yeah. the world. But with a sense of humour yeah. as well. So mm -hmm. that, and our, my whole philosophy, our whole philosophy, is we want to make things that leave people feeling a little more nourished than before they saw the film. It's not about shocking people. To, they, and the sh two shorts, if people want to watch them, they're, I've told you how to find them. They both have that quality for sure. You finish and go, oh, I feel a little more, oh, I feel a bit better. Mm -hmm. Even though it's quite sad or whatever, it leaves you, there's a little lift at the end. Um, so it's just weird because we've got, I've got no like desire to, I'm still earning money as an actor just enough to pay my rent and job maintenance and <laughs> I can do it, I'm doing it. Um, but I wake up daydreaming about writing now and directing this film was such a joy, but I've got no hankering to be a director. I just couldn't afford to hire someone else, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it will be done in a couple of months out in festivals by the end of this year. We th may already have a distributor interested uh, if they're listening. I'm coming for you. Uh, they know, they know who they are. You're putting, the, you're putting it out into yeah. the world. Uh, you're letting them know it's available. 
and like I've let a handful of people who I really trust and like I was terrified because a handful of really busy real movie directors that mm -hmm. I know, some quite well known, um, watched the rough assembly proper cut, the nearly finished thing, and I was like, oh my god, because I know at least three out of five do not mince their words. That's mm -hmm. they're proper friends who would go, Joe, God bless you for getting it done. It's an amazing achievement, but mate. Move on. <laughs> move on, it doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. it's not for you. They all were just knocked out by it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I'm not religious, but I think I might be becoming spiritual because I feel like it was just given to me. This story, yeah. everyone who here watches it goes, I feel like I've read this book or seen this story before, but I haven't. It's just one of those stories that had to be told. When you watch it, you go, oh, yeah, why has that not been done? Is there something in the importance, we talked about the midlife crisis yeah. thing there, is there something in the importance of sharing stories in order to help others? Yeah. Because when I went through my mm. time of crisis, mm. when I felt very alone in the mm -hmm, world, mm -hmm. I went back to movies to feel some kind of connection exactly and to make right. some kind of understanding of what the hell is going on. Exactly. How right. have I, I got to this point of like, I've destroyed my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd yeah. Had a, I had a family, home, everything, Mate. and just, and this is, and film's it, gonna kill you. Yeah, and pulled it all down. And yeah. then I put on movies, then I put on, in fact, Go one on. movie that took me out of it, a lot, took me to mm. an awakening was King Richard, the Will Smith oh, film. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, a real film about family, about wow, sacrifice, man. and about how, you know, that, that guy, he gave up, he, he made a lot of tough decisions because yeah, yeah. he felt that was what was How right How many for times have kids. you seen it? I've only seen it the once. Well, exactly. And, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Mm. It's all you need. All you it's need. It's like a dose of medicine that's yeah. so strong. And then, and then from that you go, yeah, of course I made those sacrifices yeah. for my children. Of course I made mistakes. Other dads have made Caught mistakes. <laughs> but yeah. you don't, but when you're in a moment of feeling lost in the world, yeah. you don't consider that. You don't go, yeah. oh, everyone else is making mistakes. No. You just think it's just you. You've just hit all the nails on all the heads. And that is, weirdly, I had my own crisis like that very early, I think. I married early, had children very early, and had my first divorce and uh, year of awfulness, awful awfulness, was, I was only mid-30s. Mm -hmm. I'm now 50. Um, but... An, it's really interesting, so I had another tricky time, but really it was just enough distance to find myself having that exact experience, but weirdly, instead of watching, I found it useful to make something mm -hmm. um, with all the right intentions. There's no, there is zero career agenda with this, mm -hmm. and I mean zero, which is really rare, I think, because it takes so much to make a proper feature film, including mm -hmm. flying a whole unit with no money to Lanzarote, feeding everyone, looking after everyone, you know, everything. And I was, I did everything. I was, mm -hmm. my, my editor finished the thing and he put up, it just says credits for where the credits will go. And it just, he just put my name 17 times, <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, but it was such a joy. Mm -hmm. um, and it still feels like it's, and now feels like it's going to be uh, it's not going to change the world, but if it does what you're talking mm -hmm. about, if it King Richards, yeah. one person, just one person, and I feel bloody confident it will, mm -hmm. and, and, and male and female, there's like there's a there's a proper latch onable person for both, mm. you know, and I think what's great is a lot of people separating or ends of marriages or things. It's very hard to get your head around the other of that dynamic for years. These two people, uh, you never quite find out what her trauma is, which I love. I want the audience to, they can project up the wazoo what her mm -hmm. thing is. I mean, my actress knew, you know, mm -hmm. she had her own decisions, it's great. But his, you know all about, because you've got one person who doesn't speak and one who can't stop speaking. And all he needs is someone to listen. And just by virtue of the fact that she doesn't speak, he gets what he always needed. Mm -hmm. And it runs out after a while, his vitriol and like, Rah! Oh, fuck, she's still here listening. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I can just be in the day. Mm. Fucking hell, it's sunny. I've only just noticed. You know, oh, man, it's beautiful. And so where did the spiritual... Where, I mean, yeah. You mentioned as well, like, you feel like this, there's some spiritual something going on yeah. that's hard to kind of grab hold of. <laughs> what is making you feel like that? Because you said some things know, just... You said some things also came together. Some things happened. Yeah. Tell me about that. 
Well, I don't know where that stuff started. That morning I woke up, I don't know what I believe, truly. But, you know, you have to wonder, don't you, about when things drop. I literally grabbed a pen and paper and wrote five pages of A4 that were pretty much was a perfect outline for a film. Not perfect, mm -hmm. but like nothing wrong with it. No, just and then I shaped seven drafts, but I luckily, the silver linings are locked down again. I, I blagged screenwriting in the past. Sold one film eight years ago, sold one pound. Um, you know, but it's still with them, they still haven't made it, but uh, I love them. Um, I did a master's degree in screenwriting online because uh, it was like, super cheap during lockdown. It was something to do, it gave mm. me shape to my week. I loved it. And my final piece, I scribbled this thing, I went, oh, this is canny. So I had like a year of this script having amazing script development for free. Because mm. the professor on course is a fucking great screenwriter. And you get moments with all these, and all your peers, your other classmates. So I actually had, it was really canny. I ended up getting the kind of work on it. It was a good script anyway, I think. You know, again, mm -hmm. it's not mine, it's whoever. Um, but by the, by the time it had had five or six drafts, it was like in the kind of shape they do in America when they fucking, you know, they note the scripts and note the scripts. It yes. was so tight. Mm -hmm that there's no waste in it at all. So when we were out there, it meant shooting this mega tight budget, tiny, I mean, my caterers, caterer, my mum was my caterer. <laughs> I nearly, nearly killed her bringing her out <laughs> to feed us all. But her busiest day for mm -hmm. human beings on a proper feature film was a nine human beings. Mm -hmm. That's how small. Most days our unit, cast and crew, was six people. Um, and it's a family affair. My nephew is only 22 and one of the greatest DOPs in the world. He started making films at eight years old. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're working with a master, but he's 22. So he's got this young energy. But he's what, like, do, what, is that, what does age actually mean? What does it, it mean? Come, he's so experienced. Yes, we, do, we can have more experience yeah. over time. But if someone's got the passion and the willing... They've been, he's been so busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like most 30-something-year-olds would be if they've been working since 21. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like that at 22. He's, he's quite something, so I still get mates rates because he's my nephew, thank <laughs> God. Not for long. Elliot Milson, he is... Um, you know, my wife is one of the greatest actors on earth. She's actually, I don't think she'd mind me saying, she's, this is sort of her swan song. She's... She's changing what she wants in the world and spiritually as well. She's feeling like after 30 years, she doesn't need or want this business anymore. It's not really working for her. She's, you know, a middle-aged woman and that is like death to a career in this country. It's mm -hmm. so hard to get gigs. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I'm not a beggar, I don't need it. But so she's, this has been, this had the whole energy of her sort of thank you acting, it's been lovely, Good, mm -hmm. goodbye. So everything she was doing had this beautiful energy of this is the, this is the swan song. I've said mm -hmm. good luck because I think when it comes out, you'll be getting loads of people see, knocking see, at your it's, door. It's, it's really interesting, like bringing up the whole spiritual thing. And yeah. I'm, I'm an actor myself yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and I, earlier this year, said to, to myself, I yeah. said, I'm done with what acting. Yeah. What, you know, that was part of the midlife crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been trying yeah, this for 20 years. Bang your head against the wall. All the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not really getting anywhere yeah. with it. Uh, in fact, feeling like every time I took one step forward, I mm. took three steps back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I said it, I went for a walk with my sister through mm. the woods and I said it out loud to mm. her. I said, I'm done. Brilliant. I'm just not, I'm just done. Well, like I've, 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 I'm not sad about that. No. I've had this journey. It's been fine. I'm going to find some. I, at that time, I didn't know what I was going to find. I'm going to find something else. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm done with that. Perfect. An hour later, I get an email of course you do. from a friend that I haven't seen in 10 years. <laughs> and his main actor has dropped out of his play. Of course. And it's on, it's on, a, um, it's on one of these theatre pubs yeah. in the West End. It's great. And he's like, can you come on Saturday Amazing. night? We're rehearsing the day. You can hold the script. I just need you to be on the stage. And, yeah. and I was like, oh, well, I haven't actually got a choice in this, have yeah, I? No, of course. You know, it's not actually up to me. There's, there's something else going exactly. on. Exactly. I don't, I don't give a shit how, mm -hmm. how airy-fairy I sound anymore. I think the, the, universe, the universe is doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the minute you let go of things, you ju there's no deodorant for desperation. Yes, yeah, and I and I and you I've know. gone to auditions since, and yeah. things feel different. Yeah, if you so, don't if you don't need it, we think about dating, for example. Yes, if you really want someone, 
you like sit forward in the seat and they're like, oh, Jesus, yeah. he's a bit much. Or, yeah. and, and whereas if you're like, and you I, could, and you I could take or leave this, mm -hmm. they sit forward and want you. And the universe does that. I think yeah. if you stop chasing, but good luck, because we've all got rent to pay and mm -hmm. kids to feed. And, but and, if and I guess can, that's a bit where the desperation comes in, isn't it? So yeah. it's, it's hard to say to someone, I had a young actor on the podcast recently, yeah. And I was trying to, you know, he's in his early 20s yeah. and I was trying to say that to him, relax a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, but I want to rent. Yeah. I want to go on holiday. But you know and what? you want stuff in, you want, you want stuff in like, Here's not the just thing. the craft. I, I've got, I, I coach actors a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like it. And, but the more I do it, the more I, I say to all of them, I, I'm, if, if people are listening to this, I'm holding out my two hands. I go, look, you've got to understand there's two sides to this thing. Um, on one hand, you have got to pay your rent, feed yourself, mortgage, whatever it is, kids, whatever it is, there's that, right? And let's put in that hand as well this weird thing that people call a career. Mm -hmm. That goes in that hand. That's all that life shit, mm. okay? Uh, this hand, English actors don't like this word, whether you like it or not, the only correct word for this hand is artist. Mm -hmm. And if you were a sculptor, a painter, a musician, any other art form, you can go to your basement, your attic room, any cupboard and practice your art. Mm -hmm. With actors, it's masturbation on your own. You need other human beings, really. So I say to them, look, You've got to feed these two hands. They are equally important, but they must never come together. The minute you start applying rent, career, thingy to this artist hand, mm -hmm. the art suffers. And the minute you start overdoing the arty shit on over here, that doesn't work. So you have to treat them as two children mm. who have very different needs. And the artist one, I say to them, start writing. And they go, oh, I don't want to be a writer. I'm not a writer. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I go, mm. no. Listen to me, it's not linked to paying your rent and your career. You're not writing to get a gig as a writer and become a writer and sell a show to Netflix and whatever. You're writing because a week where you just stare at your laptop waiting for an email that doesn't come, or a self-tape that doesn't come, compared to a week where you go into a coffee shop and write some shit sto short story for half an hour, two days out of the whole week that no one else will ever see but you start telling stories, it's the same bit of you as an actor. And it feeds the same bit of you, it's storytelling. And whether we like it or not, we all come from the shaman around the campfire, storytelling is mm. the deal. So that week where you've just gone tap, 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 or even scribbled with a pen, you don't have to show anyone. But trust me, you will be less wound up mm. in your next self-tape because you've fed that hand. And and, and so you just, this one weirdly starts getting better. This hand with the rent and everything, it's really weird because you're not quite as desperate because there's this weird short story about a goat who... The, the, wound, up, know, the wound up thing really resonates with yeah. me as well. So my, my wife, she, she went through cancer. Yeah, wow. And while I'd wait for her while she was in the hospital having yeah. her treatment, yeah. I would write. Yeah. No one's ever going to see those no. stories. Great. In fact, I had at one point, I was like, yeah, everyone, I'm, gonna, I'm writing a book yeah. here. I'm using yeah. this time to write a book. But actually, it was just release. Of course it, it was, was just so that I could manage that other thing. Wow, that's such you know, a good I could, move. But, I, but I, 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 I didn't do it intentionally. No. But it, it's on hindsight, it's reflecting back. Well, that that's I'm the like, good stuff. I'm like, actually, that got me, that's what got me through of course it. it Going into a coffee yeah, shop yeah. and writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's and so I, true. And I did have that old career, you know, I'm going to write a book. You can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. Because that's, that's, in the, that's in the society that we've, we've trained ourselves to all be like You're that. so right. Mm. And, you know, I, there's a documentary team followed our feature. And mm. the only reason I'm mentioning it is when they first said we might follow you, they were trying to find a unit. I, I talked and talked like you can tell I can. Mm. Um, and I said to them, I told them bits of this, and I said, my mission, we had such a good laugh making the short films. Mm -hmm. We all just went, oh, isn't it? All very experienced actors just going, oh, this is so lovely, because it's nothing to do with, I mean, we paid people, but it wasn't work. It was, so when I went, okay, we're gonna make this feature, I went, my mission, my fucking mission is for this to not get careery. Mm. I'm gonna make an actual feature film and you've gotta find a sales agent, distributor, you've got festivals, you've gotta do all the legal stuff. You have got, for people to see it, you have mm -hmm. gotta do all this stuff. But I am not gonna let it 
stop just being a left hand thing. It's mm. just an artistic thing. I have no agenda. Uh, I would like people to see it, but there's no, I have working my tits off. Mm. Any day job I can do to make sure that I'm not relying on it to make me money. It's also you know. when it comes to the money thing, it can damage the art oh, that you're God, creating, yeah. can't it? So yeah. even with this podcast, yeah. I went to this podcast yeah. festival last week yeah. where I'd meet with agents and distributors and they didn't look into the podcast. They just had all the advice for me about how to change it and make it the same as what everyone else is doing. And well, I, exactly. And, and I could listen exactly. and take that advice and I could do the same as everyone else exactly. and just be doing what they want. But what does that... what what value you know, does you're that? So does right. it, what the value does that offer? And that's so and right. It's it, it. It then takes away from who you are. But what's hard is when you get involved in commerce. Mm. If you get because they want like to get with consumed. Our film, if but, I I uh, I had no investors to begin with, I was like, I'm going to make this. I did a budget, worked it out, went. I think, including travelling to fucking Canary Islands, mm. renting a place to film in, that all of this. I think I can do it for 30 grand. What I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do, kickstart for 15, and then I'm going to get two credit cards. It's just me and, uh, like, sell my camper van, and we'll get there. And what, uh, um, uh, so that I could have the freedom of nobody mm -hmm. going, well, look, I have five grand's worth of say in this, or 10 grand's yeah. worth of say in this. Now, what happened is, I begged all my favours. I went to this Oscar-winning composer, Rand Dudley, who I'd done a play with at the Old Vic. She wrote them years ago, and I, I didn't, wasn't, I didn't dream of her writing the music. I was just like, I know nothing about scores. Can you please just advise us? When we've edited it, mm -hmm. my brother's a singer-songwriter. He'd like to have a go at scoring a film. Could you just advise us? She was like, well, maybe, maybe. She was like, I'm very busy. I'm very busy. And then she read the script, which was amazing and watched our shorts and emailed me and said, I've read the script twice. I love it, capital letters. I've watched your short films. Are you looking for investors? I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. No. I said, no, we're not. But do you want to help co-compose the score? She went, we can talk about that later. Why don't you want investors? So I gave her my spiel. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want anyone, I don't want to owe anyone. I, I can't be answerable to anything. Come to our house, talk to me and my husband. I went to her posh house. She sat me down, they grilled me, they went, well, we want, we want to invest, where's your budget? I showed them the budget, they went, you can't make it that cheap. I went, I can, I'm going to, well, we want to invest. And eventually they wore me down, they drew up a contract that swore they wouldn't interfere, mm -hmm. that I, I don't have to take their advice on anything, and they're not asking for the money back until it's sold. All that. I showed it to director mates of mine, they went, you're a fucking idiot, take the, <laughs> <laughs> take the money. <laughs> um, and so Anne has come on as a proper producer. But do you, put in, do you think she, she had has more been, confidence in you because she knew that your vision was solid? Maybe. Because you, yeah. because you weren't just chasing the money. Yes. It's weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's the thing. You can't fake, no. fake it. Like, I really didn't want that money. So I turned her down four times. Mm -hmm. So she, they were like, uh, you can't fake that. You know, no. you go into those meetings and try and haggle uh, but unless you really are happy to walk because away. Because you can feel something is working and yeah. something is going right. Yeah. And, there is no, and there's no yeah. value to that, monetary no, value to right. that, is there? And she's funny because now we've got a film you can watch. You know, there's a lot to be done yet. Uh, you know, Foley and sound design mm -hmm. and the score isn't finished. Her amazing score of her bits of. But, and she's doing it with my brother, which is beautiful. She's letting him Love contribute. Mm -hmm. um, what was I going to say? But already we've got a distributor interested who's read it and seen bits and blah, blah, blah. And she, I'm like, great. There's, a, there's also a sales agent interested. You know, we could, before it's even gone to a festival, have a distributor and a, that'll do. I'm like, that'll do. She's like, no, no, no. She's super ambitious. She's like, not only am I getting my money, but I'm going to make money. This film's going to fuck it. This is like going to be a hit. I'm like, all mm -hmm. right, you think like that. That's fantastic. Because I refused. I'm like, la, 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 la. What, what damage Not could listening. that do? What damage could that do well, if you started to take that in? I think it would only... I, the film is now done, so I don't think it would damage the film. No. But it could damage my experience of the next year of my life. Mm -hmm. where I, whatever comes will just be a joy. If I have any, you sow an expectation, you reap a disappointment. So I want to 
I want to sow minimum expectations. Mm -hmm. Let her have all the expectations. It's awesome that she has them. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's tricky because people keep um, saying lovely things about it. And I'm like, great. I almost now need to, once we've got it finished, I, I, I almost want to hand it over mm -hmm. to someone else because I don't want to I'll get excited. And yeah. But I, I don't Did you, want, have you always felt like this way with No, projects? I was the most ambitious, you, arrogant little prick on yeah. earth as a young actor. So where did this where did acting start for you then? Was you, uh, quite, were you No, were, I was not a stay struck kid. No. I was I I was seventeen or eighteen before I even knew it was a thing you could do. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the buttfuck Idaho Bark Show, little villages with names like Stanford Dingley an upper Bucklebury, middle of nowhere farm boy. Mm -hmm. They called me Farmer Joe at drama school. I mean, <laughs> I was at drama school a year after I discovered there was a thing called acting. You know, mm -hmm. it just happened. It was so weird. Um, and then theatre, theatre, theatre forever. A few bits of telly. Uh, you know, I've done everything now, lots of everything. I've had a bizarrely okay career. Um, but it started just a way to meet girls. And I was at training as a, <laughs> training exactly at, the same training as a stage manager. I was going to be yeah. a stage manager. I went, oh, you can, yeah. I loved carpentry. Oh, you can build sets. Great, that'll do yeah. me. And then some actors, some professional actors sort of went, no, you need to be over here doing this. Mm -hmm. Do I? And they were right, you know. Um, yeah, bonkers. Bonkers. Yeah, and I, I, weird today. So today at the mm -hmm. at Romford, I'm, I've just watched a film I'm in mean, all of. Like I starred in this film, Warblade. And that's how low budget what, it is. What's that film about? It's a World War Two action adventure, right. daring do, marvelous moustache, okay. <laughs> guns, you know, Nazi bunkers and, yes, and French yeah. resistance. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a cameo role in the other feature on today by complete fluke. Just what so a weird happened, day. Just yeah. so happened to be here. Yeah, really strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, another mate's got his. But short is that because today. you're putting yourself out there into the world, though? Isn't I think it, it might be. Yeah. yeah you can't just stay, these, nothing happens if you just stay at home, does no, it? No, that's right. So that's we can't, right. like, because we've talked yeah. about the universe a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there you is... You have to this, turn up. You have to, you have to show up for yeah, you it. Do, you do, you do. It's so true. Yeah, nothing happens at and home. And turning up sometimes can just be turning up on that blank bit of paper with a pen or that laptop. Uh, that is turning up. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do it regularly for it to spot. Oh, there's someone mm. over there who needs a story. <laughs> it will hand you one. Yes. It's true. It's bonkers. Mm. Yeah, man. Well, good chat. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> maybe we we're unlocking the secrets to the universe here in Mate, some way. You know, <laughs> and I have to say, this shit was already going on with me. And then mm. I went and did uh, a plant medicine called ayahuasca. You've done that, have you? I have. And it suddenly went, <laughs> Hold on. yes, you Hold are on. right about all this. So I've had a very similar experience right. that, that changed my... Yeah. Um, now that started my midlife crisis, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. change it. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah it woke me Do up. it again, it might close it. Well, no, no, <laughs> it, 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 it closed oh, brilliant. It, it, on the journey that yeah. it took me on yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So, but, but mine wasn't ayahuasca, mine yeah. was a metal, metal, uh, edible marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I didn't realise that you yeah. could do it on, yeah. on that. Wow. But so you've had the ayahuasca. Yeah, what proper ceremony. The proper ceremony. Mm. Did you go, did you go to South? Uh, South um, America? Or? No, I went to somewhere else, which I can't mention because technically... <laughs> For legal reasons. But they've been doing it 25 years in this place. And mm -hmm. Even the council know about it. It's super, super safe. Well, um, Australia, it's completely legal now. Oh, that's good. It's good. It, so westernised countries are mm. recognising oh, the, the impact... It should the be import. handed out on everyone's 21st yeah. birthday. <laughs> well, it's literally a plant medicine. Is there's nothing in they give they give they, they give it, well they give it to I'm not saying this in is Peru right. they, yeah, five they, years old yeah yeah anyway so there's but there's, but there's something to it for yeah. sure oh, yeah. and and like I say it's being legalised in some countries yeah. it, it you know we've always got to be careful with yeah, yeah. like I'd say the big thing is that you can go to dark places that's the and, point they call it the work you mm, do work yeah. but it's like. And yes, there's people go, oh, you have to throw up in front of people. Mm -hmm. You don't always at all. But it is the work. It literally, it is so arrogant to think we are the most intelligent things in the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a joke. Or, or that we even understand what the oh universe is. Oh my God. Is. It just is so humbling. You just get a moment of going, oh, I see. You the get scale. to look behind the curtain. I see the scale of things and quite how small I am. So mm -hmm. hence, whatever you go through in the ceremony, be it the odd bliss moment or the odd bit of dark grief. Uh, like I've, I've had a lot of, I don't even know what it is. Is this my dead dad or is this my marriage? What is this? Blah, grief. But you come out feeling 10 stone lighter 
and you just don't sweat the small stuff as much. So I chose to do it just before shooting my features because I knew I was a one-man band, line producer, unit driver, fucking props master, uh, you know, continuity, everything. Mm -hmm. the, the capacity for stressful moments was so huge that I deliberately timed this experience, having heard what I've heard about it. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I'd finished two weeks before shooting and I was about as zen as I get, mm. which meant it just went, I mean, I'm just gonna say this, shot the thing for 34 grand, 137 scenes, 61 locations, 61 locations, overseas travel, uh, we wrapped early, 15 out of 16 days, and we didn't drop a single scene. Just saying. I'm never going to do a film again because it will never go that well again. <laughs> so that's it. I'm out. Why, why do you have to say that? <laughs> oh, well, because <laughs> of expectation. Expectation, I, I, yeah. I, Another one might not go like that, but mm. that's all right, you know. Yeah. It was a lot of planning. Was there, was there an overriding message that you got from your experience? Is there an overriding takeaway? Because I know from, from mine, it was... Everything's going to be okay. Lovely. Very similar. Like, Very everything's similar. going to be okay. Like, well, well, I, I, more than that, everything already is, which mm, is bonkers, isn't yes. it? And, and you it, think it, you're it, in the middle of strife, and you go, oh, yeah, I suppose it is. Really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> similar. Mm. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't sweat the small stuff. And, um, you know, uh, we're going there. The, the, a mo even a moment of what uh, unconditional love feels like. Yeah. Oh. Then you sort, really, yes, you yeah. feel like, let's overshare i have had a suicidal moment in my life mm -hmm. a real one a long time ago but i have had that moment and after you have a moment of universal unconditional love you go oh well that won't happen again see mine was on the same night yeah wow so i went to a really really dark place first wow i went to the white ear of all whiteies i went to my dog's gonna die yeah Oh shit! My wife's gonna die. We're all gonna die. Oh shit! My kids are gonna die. Yeah, I can't. Ha I can't yeah, deal with it. No. Yeah. So therefore, I must die first. Oh, very good. I see. Therefore, yes. I must go tonight. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that all just yeah. that yeah. all just yeah. adds yeah. up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but I also knew at that time that if I needed to feel safe, I needed to call my dad. Wow. And wow. and just being with my dad, that awesome. was enough to take me away from that. And yeah. Awesome. And I and I and I went and I carried on going to hell for yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But then my guide came, and he Amazing. said, "Just, just, just look over here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, all of that, all that bad stuff that you've consumed in your life, and yeah, yeah. all them bad feelings all and true. negative emotions, you've you've felt that. Yeah. But if you just look over here, there's also all the good stuff. I know, isn't that amazing? And and where just you, as true. Yeah, just as true. And yeah. there's balance yeah. and there's both. Yeah. But where would you rather look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going forward, where would you yeah, rather yeah, be? Yeah, would you rather yeah. be more over here yeah. or more over there? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome, man. What's the time? Is it midnight? I feel like <laughs> we, we had the best chat ever. <laughs> well, awesome. That's awesome. What happens. That's just what happens when you, you open up and you're truthful and you just Cut. and you just share. People, say, I've got a mate who's some of their their, mm. their first short film that come into festivals. They're like, they wanted to quiz me about what's the deal with festivals. He might have joined the room. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. you. There will be a reason why you came today. Mm. And it might only turn up in a year. Like some people I've met at festivals, it's a year later we go, oh yeah. I think when we're young, we want, you know, we want, we've got so much expectation. Yeah, yeah. And some of us manage to let go of that yeah, expectation. Yeah, yeah that's the key. And, and some of us still hold on to it mm. even. I know mm. some people mm. that are in their 50s, 60s, still oh, holding oh, on man. to that, that expectation yeah, and the must and the want. and. <sighs> Yeah. And and you can see it not it's working exhausting. for them. Yeah. When, once you've re once you've gone over to the other side. It is funny. Once you've released from that. Yeah. There's definitely something more about living in the uh, the present moment. Yeah, of course. This is you asked what the time was, but for me, yeah, it's this whenever is the, it is. This, this, is, 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 the this time. is the time. <laughs> and that's what I love about doing this. Yeah, like man. like we're getting to share that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we can reflect yeah. on this time. We can watch this yeah. back later. Whoever listens to this, they'll have the same experience because they they'll oh, be look. in that time yeah, and see? they'll be like but we're yeah. in this moment and yeah. that's all that matters. It is, it is. What's, it what's is. happening right yeah, amazing. here. Amazing. Yeah. Fucking awesome, man. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. And but do you have any, because I don't <laughs> think this is, a, I don't think this is wrong to ask. And Go on. Have you hopes? Have you dreams for the future? That's not without, yeah, no, very good. without expectation. Well, more of this shit. More of this life stuff. Mm. I, I, I'm enjoying it. 
That's it, you know. Uh, I've got two kids, well three, I've got a stepson as well though, they're all my kids. Um, it's a hoot watching them do their shit. Um, no, I mean, I'll take anything. And weirdly, the shit is just as interesting, even if it's not as enjoyable. <laughs> you know I mean, so bring it on, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, my, my dad, I've just passed the age my dad died. And my dad was my everything. Was that, was that a weird moment? Very weird. Mm. My brother is four years older than me. And my dad died at 49. And when my brother was 49, turning 50, he kept messaging me going, I feel so weird. It's so weird. I'm so nervous. I, it's, in, it's in eight weeks and two days mm -hmm. that I'll Almost be like a day a, older. He had it on a, a calendar. Count, a countdown. I was like, chill out, dude. Mm -hmm. Then I got to 49 and went, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fucking weird. Because when you were calendar. younger, you had expectations of you looked at that person. Yeah. Like, that's what the. And even though you died young, you still go, ah, that's a good innings. Yes, but you get and there. And you get there and go, mm. fuck me. This is when he checked out. Mm. So I already feel like I've won the prize. Mm -hmm. Like I'm three months over what he got. So it's all great. It's all a, it's all a bonus it's from, a from here bonus. on out. Yeah, it's like I've got past the 500 grand question on who wants to be a millionaire. I'm going home mm -hmm. with that. Fine. Yeah, it's all good. Um, there'll be shit to come. Of course. But, you know, it, a bit like you're talking about those ceremonies, when you go through the tricky bits, the, the secret is to just ride it. Go, okay, mm. okay. And, um, yeah, and I think once you've been to the, the worst of it, once you've been mm. to hell. Yeah. <laughs> you've been, you've, had, exactly. you've, been, you've experienced the worst. And it's all, if you survive, mm. it's, um, it's good on the other side. I'm saying that. There are people who some terrible things happen to people and their families. Of course. And obviously this is all relative. But you know what, that's the really, if you can really get your head around that, this is the mega thing to get your head around. The real perspective, that even the darkest shit going on now in Gaza. And please don't cancel me, or cancel me if you want. What I'm gonna say is please, with perspective, what I'm talking about is history. I've always been a history geek. And my wife doesn't read much history, isn't like, oh, I'll watch every history document. I've read every fucking, I love history. And I find it soothing because the world is fucking loopy right now. And I'm not diminishing the pain people are going through and the awful shit that's happening and that is worrying and blah, blah, blah. But with a couple of exceptions, it's all happened before. Mm -hmm. With a couple of exceptions. The exception being media is a new thing, right? But pain and war and greed and that shit has been going forever. And the universe, the trees, the sea, the, well, I know there's global warming, but basically the bigger picture, we're just one planet. The fucking universe is, is you know, cows chew grass. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, a car will backfire and they're just like, whatever. That's how I see the universe. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. So the big, 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 big picture is what I've got from the last few years of having a look at things. And it's super helpful because otherwise you can, I can go down a news scroll doom thing mm -hmm. where the, if you have any empathy, your empathy can literally freeze you up. From inside, like I can't, I can't make dinner because I can't eat. If mm -hmm. there are people suffering so much, it doesn't help other people for you to just sit there and try and feel their pain. Do something. Vote for the right people. So you're not you saying you're not saying don't care. No, not don't it's care. It's not don't, but don't care. At don't, all, but don't be consumed. Don't let it consume your joy mm -hmm. because that, that doesn't help anyone. And if and when the time comes that I'm in a collapsed building one day and I'm under rubble, I promise you, I will be not be wishing, I will not wish that someone 2,000 miles away sits under their table and cries for me. Mm -hmm. I'd rather they went and had some fish and chips and got pissed. Mm. You know, I think that's what I need. Yeah. My daughter will cancel me for that. <laughs> so she sometimes sings, let's all cancel Joseph. Let, I go, what have I said now? No, let's all cancel this Joseph. Is a this is a really important point as well about about cancelling people's freedom to Oof. to express themselves to yeah. talk yeah 
to we've got to talk this stuff through. We may be completely in the wrong, me and you sitting here right now. Yeah. So, but we still need to say it in order for someone else that does listen in right. to figure it out. Yeah, lovely. And to uh, have their uh, all opinions are valid, you know, um, and changeable. Mm -hmm. I might feel differently tomorrow. Yes. I think that's a, that's a really tricky thing these days because the minute it's on Twitter the, or X yes, or something, yeah. we you refer know, back go, to something from there, ten. You said th this. You said this ten years ago. You were, you were in fucking hell. Find a yeah. cell in me that was there then. It's yeah. all gone. Yeah. Um, you know, but tricky, tricky, tricky times. Yeah. <laughs> but but I do feel the more we continue to talk about yeah. it, the more people yeah. like I I talk to and hear more people resonating with that that we change. Yeah. Than the, the opposite that yeah. saying no we we should hold someone accountable to the words that they yeah, said 10 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's true. They just don't make, you don't, the good news doesn't make the headlines, does it? No. You know, man helps no. woman across road, shocker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a headline. So, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the time? I am asking yes, about the real time, only quarter, because... Quarter to seven. Oh, so I have to go and watch another film. That's go, perfect. Go watch a movie. Um, I really appreciate you joining Absolute me. Absolute And joy. sharing today. Um, yeah, if, if someone wants to find out more about the, the oh, movie, okay. the moment, uh, when are we, when uh, are we going to seek it out? The film is on the socials. It, I'm going to get this wrong, but basically on, let's say, Instagram. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to link it. Signs of Life the Film 1 or something on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I think it's at Signs of Life Film on Twitter X, whatever. And I'm there as cryptically, I'm hidden on Twitter as Joseph Milson. Okay. Uh, and then I think on Instagram I'm that Joseph Milson because there's a fan account. God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> so your mum, is it? Yeah, no, no, it's an amazing woman called Karen. Right. Um, uh, yeah, so that's where. I'll put it all in the comments. Yeah, great. Man. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining thank me. Thank you. What really, a pleasure. Really appreciate you sharing. Hurrah. Um, and if anyone was watching or listening, we appreciate you for, for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Namaste, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you.